Yo, what's going on guys? Today I want to talk about who will the Memphis Grizzlies be drafting in this year's NBA draft. And if you guys did not know, they switched second round picks and first round picks with the New Orleans Pelicans. They now have the 10th pick and I have them getting Josh Giddy, and they have the 40th pick. And at the 40th pick, I think they should get the 6 foot 10, 19 year old, you know, sh possible stretch four big man from Baltimore, Isaiah Todd, who had about five rebounds, less than assists a game, one and a half turnovers, under a block game, half a steal game, 37% from three. 43% from the field and 12 and a half points. Look, he's got good athleticism and size at six foot ten, and he moves really well for his size. Not quite like a wing, but he's got really good mobility for a stretch four, small ball big. And his best skill he brings from an NBA perspective is his shooting. He's a legitimate weapon from beyond the three point line, albeit an inconsistent one right now. He hit better he hit 36, a little over 36% from three and in the g league and the ignite had few instances of him running off movement action to get him free they ran a few slip actions and flare screens for him where he could do a good job of catching on the hop and being ready to fire with smart strong shot prep it's not great at like for you know compared to other prospects in his, his draft but for his size and the fact that he's able to execute it at this clip is good and you know he made just 37.7% of his catch and shoot jumpers last year, which is slightly below the G League average. The shot difficult was real. He has the tools to be a, re a reliable shooting threat at some point in his career, sooner rather than later, given the baseline of what he's shown. Now, his weaknesses is basically, even though he's a real shooter, real touch, he has really bad shot selection. As a scorer, he doesn't finish at the well rim well, scoring only 46.7%. And his bigger problem is his lack of passing ability. He doesn't look for his teammates. He gets tunnel vision. And, you know, there's a lot of times where sometimes he'd be in the post and he'd have a nice kick out, but he doesn't look for them. So defensively, he's a bit of a tweener between a four and a five. He's not a great rim protector. Guards have very few is issues finishing over him. Because he's skinny, he tends to avoid contact. Players went through him with ease. So look, I think he's a two-way prospect, sort of like Josh Hall. I think... Todd has legitimate two-way consideration. He has the genuine tools that are worth developing, and the tools have real value for the where the league is going. But Todd has such a long way to go. His complete inability to absorb contact right now makes it really hard to see him go through transition. And he's got to spend time getting stronger and more willing to play through contact. And he's going to have to significantly improve the feel for his game. And he has the physical tools to be a 3 and D stretch four or big, small ball big man. But he's multiple years away from making an NBA impact. So it's going to take a significant amount of work and willingness to change his game. Instead of being the shot creator he's hyped up to be, he's going to have to be this you know elite movement shooter who can defend at, defend at a high level multiple positions. And if he does that, he's going to be a long-term NBA player. Now... I think it is interesting where we look at the other guys that they could choose. You know, they're in a range of the draft that there's a lot of options. and I think they need wing help. You know, I don't think Joe Weiskamp or Brandon Boston are going to be available. I think they're going to be one of the earlier. But guys like maybe like a Josh Christopher, a Joel Ayaya are interesting for them. Or Isaiah Livers. I think Joel Ayaya, who could play the two and the three, could be actually a really decent player for them he played technically four years at gonzaga he redshirted his first year so he's played three years and he gets the most of what he has athletically good on the ground but he's not really explosive he's more reactive than powerful ayaya, ayaya brings a lot of versatility to the table making him a well-rounded player great in transition terrific at rebounding for a guard who le helps lead the break by grabbing and going out in transition a good passer in open court uses speed and touch to be effective at carving angles also sharp in the half court as a playmaker who doesn't turn it over like he, this past year he shot almost 39 percent 57.5 percent had a steal game for the pa over steal game for the past two years only turn over one and a half times a game he had about three assists a game seven rebounds and 12 points this year Look, his weakness is he's not an elite athlete. He lacks power and explosiveness. He's got good size, but he only has a six foot seven wingspan on a six foot five frame, 180 pounds. Okay. And he struggles with dealing with screens on defense. Like, Ayaya is an interesting potential role player because of how well rounded his overall skill set is. He has the potential to be a plus on defense and someone who can shoot off the catch and act as a secondary ball hander on offense. But he has a lot of work to do. His route to being an NBA player is by becoming a terrific shooter and continuing to improve on defense. That will build a nice base for him. 
and he could also add valuable things like rebounding to a team he's a solid defender with real flaws and a solid shooter he's a good driver who's an elite ball handle and needs something to hang his hat on early otherwise he might get lost in the shuffle so i do think he, he is in an interesting situation compared to other players but i do think unlike other players he could actually realistically turn those fortunes around now the next guy i think they could go like i said josh christopher i'm not wild on him i'm not sold but you you could get me to argue that josh christopher or joel Aya are guys that could really benefit i think joel Aya is the best for them he's a guy who just really in my opinion lit it up surprisingly not like lit it up but like he did really well efficient wise in the role that he was given so and that's why i give my i tip my hat to him but now with that being said i think a really good guy for them right here i don't think herb jones is going to be available but i think a guy maybe that they could use i'm trying to think i mean there there's a lot of options here you could argue that they need more shooting but i think i think it is shooting like sam hauser could be a reach for some people but they would just get a guy who shot 40 percent all through college okay and got better and better every year he's a great he's literally six foot eight 215 pounds 23 he's a finished product but he's got great size for a floor spacer and has zero issues getting a shot over anybody and hauser and Corey kespert are probably the two best most accomplished shooters in this draft class hauser was two made free throws away from averaging 50 40 and 90 shooting splits and if you give him an open look from a spot up situation it's basically automatic and he took about 60 percent of his shots from three in college all through his career last year was his worst catch and shoot year and he still made 42.7 percent of those however he improved drastically from pull-up situations making 48.9 percent and he has such free and easy simple shot mechanics he hits them off movement makes them off hop or off a planted foot in a one two and has zero doubts he'll be a 40 percent three-point shooter and he's such an exceptional versatile shooter but the problem is he has no quickness or first step he's going to struggle athletically in the nba he's very little poppy as a uh, athlete and he's kind of bad on defense he doesn't have any chance to defend at the nba level he's going to be a magnet for switches every single time the opposing team comes down the floor to the point that i don't think his shooting overrides the lack of defense but the lot the shooting is so ridiculously good that it's worth a bet just in case he does he's a two-way guy for me because of that if he can pr prove my evaluation wrong become anything resembling passable on defense he's going to stick because of his shooting from rotation rotational aspect so maybe if he can become like kyle corver levels of good shooting that he can stick but if he doesn't do that i don't think crap's gonna happen because come on like you can't you gotta be at least i think some you, you gotta you gotta have unless he can play the two guard where he'll become long enough to be able to guard you know players that you could argue that are going to be more athletic than him, but he's going to be bigger. But I don't think he's going to have the ability to, like, he's not athletically quick enough to stay. The guards are just going to beat him on plays every single time. So, yeah, let me hear your guys' thoughts. What would you guys do? You know, I think the best would be if you get a guy like Isaiah Todd. But, again, you don't know if he's going to say, screw y'all, you know, so... That's it for me. I'm a peace out, guys. Puppies. Ooh.